Welcome, I'm Faye Waterman, the Conversation Curator, and today uh, my guest is Bill Merch. And Bill is going to introduce himself and tell us a little bit about what he does and where he comes from. Over to you, Bill. Thanks, Faye. So yeah, Bill Merch is my name. I work for IDM Consulting. So I, I work primarily with software called DriveWorks, which is design automation software for engineers, shop fit out, any company that really wants to design something faster and more efficiently. I, I originally trained as a mechanical engineer and then I got into the area of, of CAD software, computer aided design software. And right from the start, I tried to find ways of making it more efficient, anywhere from little keyboard shortcuts to, to macros. That that became like a like my my specialty, I guess. And so I've been doing this for quite a few years now. And DriveWorks is to me the the ultimate. It can be used to automate entire systems. And that's why I like it so much. And that's why I specialize in it. And that's why I've gone out working by myself to 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 help people with their, their systems. Can I ask you a question there? You oh. said it helps with entire systems. What sort of systems? Can you explain a little bit about the systems sure. that it helps with? It's actually very powerful. It's it's aimed mostly at design systems, so where somebody is designing a product and it requires drawings, uh, these days 3D models. It can automate all them, the, the generation of drawings and models, but it can also generate documentation, instruction manuals. It can send emails to, to customers or to staff members. And all this can be done on a form-based system. It can even be put online. So you could have people in your company who don't really even know about the design side of things. They can answer a customer's questions on the phone, fill in the form, and it can actually then go off and generate proper, correct engineering or I should say engineering, I'm saying in general, proper design documentation for, for that product. What could take somebody weeks can, can, be, can be done to hours or hours can become minutes. So just a series of questions which you can put into the program, is it, that then can help you save hours and, and time and effort that you could be spending doing something else if, if you're an engineer or a fit-out person in a big store or an office building or whatever it is. What else can you do with that? Do you train people? Do you, you know, if they purchase your product or your service and your product, what sort of implementation is required and what training do these people need and how long would it take them depending on the product that they purchased? Okay, there are a few questions there. First of all, I cover absolutely everything to do with the software. I can talk to people at a user level, I can talk to a CEO level, um, I can do demonstrations, I can do proposals, I can train them, I can tech, provide technical support for issues that, that, that come up. A typical system, and most people underestimate how good their, their product is. They always say, oh, our product's simple, it, it's really easy to automate. But once I start talking to them and I get from them all, all the, the logic of their product or the rules that things like if it goes a bit, bit longer, oh, then we have to do this. If the customer asks for an extra thing to do with it, or that with that thing, we must also do this as well. All these things are in their head. They don't realize it's in their head. So I, I draw that out from them. Because of that, and we realize they realize how actually good their product is, realistically, you're looking at three to six months before a system is, is put in place. That's not necessarily working full time. Um, if somebody was to, if I was to work, say, two days a week for, for them doing it, then I'd be estimating probably closer to six months. If um, if I could spend more time, obviously it, it reduces. Um, the I guess the choice for the, the, the customer is do they train their own internal staff, which I can do, of course, and help them do it, then they have to ramp up and learn. It will take longer than six months for them. If I do it, then I can say, look, three to six months, we'll, we'll give them a, a product. 
it would be much easier for you to do the training instead of training that person that then is going to train their staff because it does take a lot longer, doesn't it? Whereas you can just go in there, help with the implementation, do all the training for all the staff and whomever needs it, and there's time saved. Absolutely. It, it's pretty rare that I would train somebody to train their staff. I would train their staff directly and yes. then work with them after. Or if the people say, look, we, we don't really we have the money, we have the need, we don't have the time, then I, I can say to them, well, I can get it to you within three to six months. If it's if if you if I train your staff and you do it, it's more likely to be nine to twelve months because of the ramp up period of them learning that they don't know all the, the shortcuts that, that, that I know, that they don't know how to do things quickly that, that I can do. Do you create manuals for for them so that they've got a backup if something goes wrong or they're not sure about something or they get a new staff member in, the other staff can help train them, but that backup manual, manual for them would be uh, something that, would simplify things for the staff members if you weren't available to come in and train that staff member. Absolutely. There's also um, built-in comments throughout the entire system. So wherever you're creating variables or rules, you can put comments in there to explain what that particular part of the system does. To be honest, most people haven't worried about a manual because that will just add more time to the, to the process. So they're happy not to. So I still document things and, and I still do give them basic documentation. But if they wanted a full-on training manual, that would that's certainly possible, of course. It's just extra time and money. These businesses that have, they obviously have a program. Yes, a, which, it, it needs to be a program called SolidWorks. Right. So they have that program, but the, the programs are always being updated and new initiatives within a program and things like that. Mm -hmm. So do you go in and help them implement that new component of the program when, when that happens? I, I can. It's a it's a bit of a three-way partnership here because they they've bought this so the SolidWorks software from a reseller. So typically the reseller would, would do that for them because that's part of, of their ongoing yearly yearly fee that they pay. But sometimes because it's the DriveWorks system and they know that I know SolidWorks and DriveWorks, they're willing to get me to come in and do both of them. I, I can do SolidWorks as, as well as DriveWorks. I can upgrade, I can uninstall, reinstall, I can do it, whatever they need. What other things do you do, Bill? I mentioned SolidWorks there. SolidWorks is the, the underlying software that I use for DriveWorks. But SolidWorks is a 3D modeling program of its own. It's the most commonly used 3D solids program in the world. So I'm I'm certified at the highest level you can get for, for that. So I can do anything, train, support, install, troubleshoot, et cetera. So um, what does that program actually do? What service does that program provide? Okay, that program is a generic modeler. It's aimed primarily at engineering people because that, that's the basis of it. But honestly, you could use that software to design the laptop that I'm working on now, the lamp I have up here on my desk, the screens. I could use it to model your earrings, um, anything. It's a 3D modeling tool that can model virtually anything you want. Um, and then you can produce different views. You can produce animations of it, anything at all. So that's so yes, yeah, that, I've been working on that for fifteen years now, I think. Right. Um, so that's that's the core program. Another bit of software I work with is called Swood or S Wood, which again is a software that runs on SolidWorks, but this is SolidWorks specifically for the woodworking industry. Right. Okay. So again, SolidWorks based, but it, it's going in a different direction. I've picked it up because it's similar to DriveWorks in that it automates the procedures of a woodworking system. So DriveWorks is generic. This wood is very specific. So it has, has lots of built-in, already prepared woodworking type tools. It, it fits in with, in with my desire to automate things, to make things faster and more efficient. And you're talking <laughs> right over the top of yeah, my head yeah. here, Bill. <laughs> but I understand that you've got the SolidWorks is the basis of it. 
Yeah. And you've got the sward, which is another component for people, engineers who do deal with woodwork. How many components are there that you well, actually work with? Well, well, for me, I have to think about it. SolidWorks itself has hundreds of add-ons that you can you can use. So, yes, I have skills in other systems. I have skills in what's called PDM, um, which is product data management. So that's not so much the modeling as handling the files you create and the, the streamlining of them, um, approval processes, so that if, for example, a junior engineer or junior designer creates something, that can't be released unless a senior person approves it. Now, that's, right. the, that's not done in paper. That's done in, in the computer. The, the person submits it, um, actions it from InDesign to request for approval, Nobody else can touch it until that person's manager has looked at it and approves or, or denies it. So I can do that sort of stuff. So There's, nobody can move forward until it has been approved. Exactly, yes. And, and that would be a safety issue as well, wouldn't it? Oh, it's it's safety. It's um, it's tracking. You can use it for um, ISO accreditation, the National Standards Organisation accreditation of your overall system within, um, the, within the, the company. Um, it can go right through to um, the data being connected to what's called an ERP system or an MRP system. So that's materials requirement planning. So the orders that people don't know that to order the product. If if, if they design a new product that also involves component pieces they don't make in house, they have to buy. Well, once it goes through the PDM system, uh, an email could go to the ordering people say you need to order five of these. So it, it it connects the all the whole system. It's a bit, bit like a robot, isn't it? It's sort of that automation. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, you, you could say though, it's like a software a robot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah. you can you can connect these different systems together so that you're not having to put in data more than once. Yes. Yeah. So it saves time, saves money, saves stress, saves so many things if yeah. you have the right implementation and the right programs within your organisation to design or do whatever you want to do. Yeah. There's the, the other thing to look at too is the, you said less stress, but um, it reduces errors because it's a robot. Yes. It's competitive. If, if part of the, the system, and I'm using the word system in general because it could be quite different, if it's very mundane, then errors can occur because people get bored and they simply do it, they, they make a typo or they forget a particular step. Conversely, if it's a very complex part of the system, then errors can simply occur through human error. Yes. In both cases, it can lead to, in some cases, massive cost overruns. Products are manufactured in the factory that are wrong. And so that leads to wasting of time, wasting of money. If you put the system in place, although the system can be, it's perceived to be expensive, you will generally get your money back within a year because mm. of the time and cost savings. Mm. And you said that, that the system, the basic one, would start around $30,000. That, that's my, my rough guide for a DriveWorks full-on system, yeah. That, yeah. That, that would be focusing just on the design aspects, not necessarily talking to the other elements of, of the company. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's quite fascinating. You've You've talked and you've gone over my head with some of this stuff. <laughs> I, I can sort of get the concept, but imagining how it all works and how it slots together, it's quite amazing the brilliance of of programs that can do all this sort of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Mm. DriveWorks has been around since 2001. Um, they've got what's called a gold partner for SolidWorks. That's the highest level you can get. So they have certain requirements they must meet every year. They must make sure their software works with SolarWorks all the time and all the, all the new releases and a few older releases. So there's a lot of um, a, lot of, a lot of pressure, a lot of requirements on them to, to make sure it's as good as it can possibly be. Well, test and measure all the time, wouldn't they? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because they, you know, they're liable if they, if they sell a component or add a component that's not efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
you also do training. So what sort of training do you do? You train when you put in a system for an organisation, but do you do other training as well? Uh, I can do. I'm a qualified trainer, certificate for uh, level of training, which is one level below a, a diploma. So um, I do have the the theory and qualifications to talk to people about training in, in general. Um, I use that those skills when I'm writing training documentation, for example, if I'm writing a, uh, for example, I'm running a course right now for a company, so I'll use those skills to know um, what sort of documentation to, to write, what sort of procedures to write, depending on the, the target audience. So I can do that for myself, but I, I do have the ability to teach that, that to, to other people. Um, to be honest, it's not a big part of, of my business because the other part just comes in more often and people perceive me as more of a technical trainer or more of a drive work, solar works type person rather than a generic type trainer. Mm. But I, I have run, um, I guess you call it sort of train the trainer type sessions over the years where I worked for, I worked for one of the solar works resellers and as new people came on board, I would be asked to help them become better trainers. So I would sit in on their classes and I would give them feedback and be a bit like a mentor to them um, and then work with them to give them tips and tricks of, of how they can be uh, better trainers. Yeah. So where do you see yourself down the track? How, you know, how far, how far along? What do you want to um, do? Do you want to build a company that you employ people or do you just want to work on your own? Or where do you see yourself in three or four years down the track? It's a little bit of both in that, I'd like to become better known as, I guess, the drive works guy in, in Australia and probably New Zealand, but that tends to get lumped, lumped together with, with this sort of software. Um, I, but, but in doing that, I think I would probably need people to, to work with me. Um, so I'll start off with probably people keep virtual assistants, which I, I don't have yet, but I think that's probably not too far away, something to take away, a bit like the, the design system. To take away some of the mundane stuff that that I the admin that, you know, that I have to <laughs> don't really want to, and I can focus on on, on what I'm better at. Yeah, um, but uh, there's enough work coming in now that if it keeps going this way, I can see me reaching the point where I, I would consider looking at maybe on a contract basis to begin with, but I'm training somebody up to use Swood or DriveWorks, somebody who wants to get involved in that. Okay. If you had asked me this a few months ago, I would have I wouldn't have said this, but business is going quite well now and there's a lot more happening. I've got a few more connections happening. And I can see it possibly picking up to the point where I would consider employing somebody. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. That's fantastic. So what tips could you give engineers out there if they were looking at upgrading their program, their software? What sort of tips would you give them? If they were listening to this, I, I guess the first thing I'd say is you can always make the system faster and more efficient, but but there is time and effort involved in it. So you you have to make the decision: Are you willing to keep going the way you are now? If so, stop complaining about the, <laughs> the issues that might be occurring, or work out a way to get the system better. Although I'm saying this system is thirty thousand dollars. That thirty thousand dollars, what is I said, could be over three, five, six months. But as part of that development, I can give them something probably within a month that they can start to use that might that might save ten minutes a day. While they're saving ten minutes a day, they have more time, and I'm developing it a, a bit more. And after four months, I can give them an upgrade. Maybe it saves half an hour a, a day. So it's not a case of of saying, "Oh, I have to wait six months." It can be a phased. Um, in implement implementation. Yeah, I mean, I would say to people, you, I think you should always be looking for ways of making things faster and more efficient. Highlight or identify the areas of concern, um, and then look for ways to to improve them, or in fact, in some in some cases, almost remove them by put by putting a proper system in. That issue just disappears, mm. and they don't realize it until such time as something goes wrong. And then they start looking. Maybe it's time for them to start looking now if there's 
little glitches in in what they're doing now, which they could save time, money and effort uh, to put in a new program. Yeah. There's a, I, I took a saying that I've heard and I've put, twisted, or not twisted, adapted to this, was saying, what, when's the best time to implement a design automation system? The answer is two years ago. <laughs> when's, the, when's the second best time to implement it? Now. Yeah. So if, if you don't do it, you'll you be stuck, stuck behind it. I've seen customers who say, no, I don't have the time. And two years later, they come back and say, I have to make the time. I've spent two years fighting against this. It's just not working. I know of one company in Australia, it took them, I think, I don't remember the exact time frames, but the, the owner said it took him three times longer than he hoped it would to get the system in place, but he was 10 times happier than he ever imagined he would be. They actually had to move office uh, and build a, a self, a, a purpose-built factory uh, twice as big as where they were before, purely because of implementing drive works and, and the flow and effects from that. So mm -hmm. the, the, it, it's not infinite, of course, but the, the capabilities are enormous. Yeah, great. Thanks, Bill. Now, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, well, I'm a website, www.idmconsulting.com.au, uh, email bill at idmconsulting.com.au. I'm on LinkedIn um, under Bill Murch, M-U-R-C-H. Phone number is Australia, if you're calling from overseas, plus 61. Uh, in Australia, it's 0435 866 double nine zero thanks bill it's been very informative thank you thank, thank you i'm faye waterman the conversation curator i'll be back another time bye for now